Welcome to Sapporo, Japan. This is a city that embraces its tradition and culture while constantly pushing the boundaries of innovation and creativity. From its delicious food to its stunning natural landscapes, Sapporo has something to offer for everyone. This is a city that takes its culinary scene seriously. Whether it's a bowl of miso ramen or a plate of freshly caught crab, Sapporo is a food lover's paradise. Not to mention the winter festivals and skiing that bring thousands of visitors from around the globe. But it's not just about the food and festivals here. The natural beauty of Sapporo is also something to behold. From the strange and inspiring views of Makomanai Takino Cemetery to the hot springs of Otaru just minutes away by train, this city has some of the most stunning landscapes in all of Japan. So join me on this adventure as we explore all that Sapporo has to offer. Get ready to immerse yourself in the culture, the food, and the people of this incredible city. This is Sapporo, and you're in for a ride. On this cold, wintry day in Sapporo, the largest city on the northern island of Japan's Hokkaido, I happened to catch a terrible cold. <coughs> My friend and I wandered the streets of Suskino, the city's entertainment district, in search of the perfect cure to warm my ailing body, ramen. In the center of this district, we found a tiny walkway called Ganso Sapporo Ramen Yokocho, or more simply, Ramen Alley. The brightly lit signs beckoned us in to their warm glow in search of this hearty soup. 17 shops line the small alley, and the wait can be long, but it's so worth it. We decided on the shop called Baisen Shop, and after waiting for just over an hour, we got in. The shop is small, seating only about six customers at a time with one worker behind the bar. But the miso ramen, with its thick pork base and umami-rich miso, a staple of Hokkaido culinary mastery, comes out quickly, and it is one of the most satisfying and body-warming foods, especially on this snowy winter day. One of the highlights of this trip and the reason that we came on this particular weekend is for the Yuki Matsuri, or Sapporo Snow Festival. So this is the ice sculpture section of the Sapporo Snow Festival here in, well, in this little part of town that I'm gonna put right there. We're here checking out the ice sculptures where we're gonna head over soon to Odori, which is like a big park area. And that's where they have these massive snow sculptures that I think are quite a bit larger than what even what you see here. We're gonna head over there soon. I gotta find Noah though, I don't know where he went. The festival is an annual event in February which lasts for one week. Artists and sculptors display their talents in two nearby locations, Suskino and Odori Park. Suskino is adorned with intricate lit up ice sculptures lined along the middle of the street. The Odori site, however, is something to behold as these sculptures can be the size of buildings. Some of the pieces are stages for concerts, as well as a perfect canvas for projection mapping viewings. Being that I was feeling under the weather, I didn't make it as far as I would have liked before heading back to my hotel room, but here's a peek at what I saw. On our final day, we set out to find the Atama Daibutsu, an elusive Buddha statue buried beneath a mountain of snow. What was supposed to be a 45-minute trip from central Sapporo to Makomanai Takino Cemetery ended up taking hours. As a word of caution, the buses are infrequent, and if you miss one connection, it can be a very long time until the next one comes. We learned this the hard way, so plan ahead and pay attention. After a couple of hours and a rogue taxi ride later, we pulled onto the grounds of the cemetery. Obviously guardians of some sort, but I don't know what. 
One of the strange sights that greets you here are these Moai statues. Yes, the kind from Easter Island. They tower over the grounds as if standing guard over the hidden Buddha. On Easter Island, these monoliths stand as a grave for the village ancestors, but here in Hokkaido, these Moai stand as a symbol of deifying their ancestors. It's really magical to come here in the winter because you can see these statues covered in snow, something that can obviously never happen in their home of Easter Island. We continued down the path searching for our prize, the hidden Buddha, before we came across another unusual sight, Stonehenge. All right, you guys, so we took a side detour and ended up in England to see the famous Stonehenge. Just kidding, we're still in Hokkaido. They have a replica and it's right behind us here and we can't get close to it because of the snow, but it looks pretty cool. I've never seen the real thing before, but uh, I'm sure it's much older than this. Yes, Wes, Stonehenge is much older than this. This looks pretty new, but it's cool and really kind of weird that we can see it here. Okay, so Stonehenge was a scrap. I think there it is back there but uh, there doesn't seem to be a way to get close to it and I think it's just because uh, of the snow I don't think they clear a path to oh there's the Buddha I don't think they clear a path to uh, let us go anyway but Buddha's coming up that'll be cool so that is the head of the Buddha that we never got to see because so as we were walking into uh, into the area where the where the Buddha is, uh, a car came up and started screaming at us that they were closed, they were closed, they were closed, and making everybody leave. So we were like, okay. So we turned around and um, they closed at three o'clock. So they were closed, but the gate itself was not closed. So people were still walking in. And uh, yeah, so we didn't get to go. So the whole purpose of coming up here, well, one third of the purpose was to see this this Buddha behind us here because it's it's really beautiful. I'll put some pictures of it right right, right here because I don't know when I'll be back or if I'll be back. But um, we got the Maui statues in the Stonehenge, sort of. Uh, if I come back, it would be in the spring. So this place is covered in lavender. It's really purple and supposedly beautiful. It's beautiful now. So I'm not mad about the trip. Just a little sad that I couldn't see the, uh, the star of the trip. Anyway, back to Sapporo. So we boarded our bus and headed back to the Sapporo city center where we feasted on yet another specialty of Hokkaido, crab. Welcome to Sapporo Kanihonke, a specialty crab restaurant from Hokkaido, although they have branched out to many locations throughout Japan. It has a traditional Edo era vibe inside, despite the mechanical crab adorning all of their exteriors. When seated, you do get your own private room where the servers bring you your food. We had hairy crab, followed by a sort of crab porridge and some sake. After our meal, we headed back to our hotel. I got to admit, although my first crab experience was fun, I don't think I'd do it again. It costs a lot and there's very little bang for your buck. It's a lot of work getting the meat out and it's very little meat for the cost. I'll stick to shrimp and lobster. At the hotel, there was an onsen, which since I was feeling better, decided to take full advantage of. Obviously no videos because it's a bath but it was super relaxing after being out in the snow all day. Plus, it helped me to sleep really well as we had an early flight the next morning back to Tokyo and in fact, back to classes at our university. Catching the early train, we set off to New Chitose Airport to head back to Tokyo. This airport is amazing as it has a literal multi-level shopping mall for all of your food and souvenir needs. After grabbing my morning Starbucks, I headed off to the gate and to the end of our Sapporo adventure. Thank you for watching, and please hit that subscribe button and bell notification. It really helps others to find my channel. And as always, if you have questions, please leave them in the comment section and I'll respond. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all real soon. While you're here, click over here to see a day in my life at my university, or click over here and let YouTube decide.